November 11, 2022 at the Sleeman Center. My name is Martin Bosch, Rogers TV, co-hosted with Mike Seitz, providing live coverage at the Sleeman Center. Mike, welcome to the program. A reminder that Mike and I will be adding conversation during the processions, and so from time to time, we will be interrupted mid-sentence. In addition, our faces will not be shown, as this is all about Remembrance Day. And uh, welcome to you too, Martin. Uh, due to the COVID-19 Remembrance Day ceremony here in the Sleeman Center was canceled. Now about two years later, we are back to honor our veterans within the city of Guelph the traditional way. During that period of time, our Canadian landscape has changed. That is the emphasis on truth and reconciliation. In 2002, the federal government made an apology and provided monetary compensation to all First Nations veterans. The reason, upon return to Canada, First Nations people were discriminated. That is, the federal government offered First Nations and Métis inferior benefits and didn't provide proper integration into society that other veterans received and enjoyed. Mike? In 1919, the federal government made an apology to Canada's Métis, World War II veterans, and likewise was treated with the same distinction that the First Nations faced after World War II. $30 million has been set aside to address the failings of our country. The amount to be paid applies to all living or deceased since World War II. Now, in recognition here in Guelph, that is our memorial, Cenotaph in Guelph, lists World War I as 215 deaths, World War II is 182 deaths, the Korean War, one death for a total of 380, 398 deaths in total. The Guelph Cenotaph represents those who enlisted and served our country by land, sea, or air in the time of war. The Guelph Cemetery has been updated by adding 29 new names and corrected the spelling of two names that is now in place. Many of the missing names were females and First Nations. That is, the Cenotaph in Guelph will recognize all those who enlisted, male or female, being frontline soldiers, doctors, nurses, caregivers, cooks, etc. Congratulations, Guelph, in doing the right thing. Now, let's look at the national scene, recognition of Remembrance Day. World War I, when Canada had a population of 7.2 million, the deaths were 64,000, the war to end all wars, if you remember that statement. In World War II, the population was 11.3 million with 44,000 deaths. In other words, remarkable less deaths than the First World War. And in Afghanistan, uh, military deaths were 158, but none were here from Guelph. Mike, let's talk about some historical aspects with respect to this. Yes, uh, Remembrance Day was originally called Armistice Day in 1919. In 1921, Armistice Day was observed first Monday in November. That combined with the Thanksgiving holiday, thus little attention was given. In 1928, mostly veterans pushed greatly for greater recognition. Federal government changed to the current date, November 11th, for total recognition of our fallen soldiers, including enlisted Canadians. Today's ceremonies are held at the Memorial Cenotaphs within with two minutes of silence and wearing of poppies across Canada. Now a national holiday for federal and many provincial government workers. Martin? Good. So now let's talk about the poppy. It's a native plant found along the Western European Front during the wars. That is John McCrae in Flanders Field, born November 30th, 1872 at Guelph Native, wrote the poem in Flanders Field on May the 3rd, 1915. He died January 28th, 1918 at age 46. Now, the poppy became a symbol of remembrance, and might carry on with that uh, in terms of the protocol. Yes, uh, the poppy should be worn on the left side, the left lapel, and uh, it is worn from the uh, last Friday in October to 10 o'clock in the evening on November the 11th. Unknown soldiers' representation is associated with World War I battlefields churned by artillery and mud. Martin? 
Yes, uh, Bimby Ridge is called the defining moment in Canadian history. That is, Canada became a nation. That became apparent in 1967, our centennial year. And now we're going to pause and we'll comment during the ceremonies. So we're going to listen to what's proceeding here. And I hope you enjoy the show. Of the birth of Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, Guelph's very own son. The second one is the 90th anniversary of Branch 234 of the Royal Canadian Legion. And the third one, which I think is remarkable, is the 100th birthday of the Guelph Pipe Band. So as you can see, these are three very important milestones. But the most important thing is that we gather here today especially to remember those who have gone before with the ultimate sacrifice to secure our nation and our freedom. I invite you to just take a look at the uh, bulletin that most of you would have, and on there you will see campaigns that range from the Boer War in the late 1800s all the way up to Afghanistan. Our democracy and freedoms link directly to the sacrifices both ultimately and bodily and emotionally that these brothers and sisters made for us. Okay. Let us remember that in this difficult world of present day, our armed forces, both regular and reserve, our firefighters, police officers and emergency responders, and our first-line workers in the healthcare system continue to sacrifice for our well-being. As we proceed this morning, I would just like to make note of the fact that for parents and the elderly, please be aware that shortly after the two-minute silence, the firing party will fire three volleys with very loud sounds. And so you can take your cue from the period of silence. After that, there will be the volleys, and uh, we want you to be aware of that so that you're not overly startled. The placing of the wreaths on the cenotaph is the first act of remembrance that we observe. This will be conducted under the direction of Comrade Mo Ferris. Announcements of the wreaths will be made by Mr. Joe Tersini. During this time, the audience can remain seated. Comrade Ferris, Please carry on with the wreaths. Okay, Mike, could you describe some of that, what's happening now? The wreaths are coming in, the procession. Uh, first of all, the uh, wreath laying party, uh, which uh, consists of uh, uh, Mo Ferris, uh, Lieutenant Sue Patterson, Naval, Captain Julie Lydon, and Lieutenant Mike Lang. Uh, the precedence of the uh, wreaths is uh, by the first by the government of uh, Canada, and uh, it will uh, workplace and safety uh, township of uh, Centre Wellington. And uh, these uh, right, were cut off. March on the colors. Okay, carry on, Mike. The marching on of the colors. Uh, I, I think the, the marching the on of the colors. I would ask the audience to please stand if you are able to. Do you know how many wreaths are going to be uh, placed at this time? I believe it's in the vicinity of 80. 80. Okay. 
to be a while for this procession, which should be interesting. This procession as it comes in, Mike, before the speaker. They're being led by the pipe band. flag, uh, followed by the uh, Canadian and British ensigns and uh, various colors after that, in descending order of, uh, of importance. Is this a complete regiment from Guelph, Ontario? Uh, no. no. No, just partial. Okay. is now in place by the cenotaph and shortly we will begin the uh, coming on of the of the wreath themselves could you describe mike i know it's good music in the background uh, in terms of the cenotaph itself it's got four soldiers one each face all the corners could you describe that configuration yes i will um, in the four corners of the cenotaph, they re represent the three services and uh, one other can be another service or a police officer. In this case, what we have is one corner, uh, there is a, a naval cadet, the other corner, an army cadet, an air force cadet, and the other corner, and the uh, remaining corner, a, a, a member of the 11th field. Thank you, Mike. display 
going yeah. through. Stirring. Abs Stirring. Absolutely so. So I imagine now we're going to start with the wreath laying, about 80 of them. Yes, and uh, they... Here, here they come. So, uh, Mike, during the wreath laying, we're going to become silent. Comrade Mo, bring on the wreaths. The audience may be seated. And who's going to be introducing them? The gentleman there? Uh, Joe Tercini. That's what I thought you'd tell, because that's Joe. He is going to receive them to lay the wreath at the cemetery, right? What he will do is he will announce it. Yeah. And the bearer themselves will bear it to one of the... The government, uh, the government of Canada. Who will lay it Lloyd on the cenotaph itself. Okay. We are now going to be quiet. The government of Ontario. Mike Schreiner, we remember. The city of Guelph, we remember. Mayor Cam. The 11th Field Regiment, RCA. The members of Branch 234 and the Ladies Auxiliary 234, we remember. Army, Navy, and Air Force veterans. The Guelph Red Chevron Club. The 12th Field Regiment Association. Korean veterans, Michael Bladen, we remember. United Nations Peacekeeper, Jack DeWinter. The Guelph Police Service with the Chief Kobe, we remember. Guelph Police Association. Guelph Fire Department, Chief Dave Elloway. The Guelph Professional Firefighters Association. Guelph Wellington Paramedics. RCSCC Ajax and NCC Achilles, we remember them. Eighteen eighty two, the Wellington Rifles, RCACC. One twenty one Red Arrow Squadron. For our indigenous warriors, we remember them. In memory of Private Charles Stewart Can. Ted Fisher, 2nd Battalion, PPCCL. Patrick Francis Warfare Joseph Magar, we remember them. Captain Al Moore and Captain Paul Moore. O'Neill Schull, family members, we all remember. Sub-Lieutenant William Weingart, RCNVR.
Canadian Corps of Commissioners from Hamilton. Cornerstone Christian School. Scouts Canada, 7th Guelph. Thank you from St. John's Ambulance, the Guelph branch. We remember them. Guelph Royal City Lions Club. Knights of Columbus Club, 10631. Knights of Columbus, 1507, and the Knights of Columbus, the 4th Division, 2510. The Guelph Lodge, number 258, AF and AM. Royal City Daylight Masonic Lodge, 742. The Royal City Men's Club. The Loyal Orange Lodge, 1331 in Guelph. Ladies Auxiliary, the Orange Lodge, the Loyal True Blues. It may be a little bit tight. Yes, that's okay. The Guelph Optimus Club. Rundle Chapter, number 108, the Order of the Eastern Star. Guelph District Shrine Club. Trillium Lodge, number 724. The Speed Lodge, number 180. Waverly Masonic Lodge, number 361. Wyndham Lodge, number 688, AF and AM. The Elliott Community, we remember them. Emmanuel Canadian Reformed Church. The Guelph Power and Sail Squadron. In honor, with respect and admiration, Hospice Wellington, we remember them. St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. Local 241. For all the nurses who served, we remember them. Guelph Chamber of Congress, lest we forget. Aldura Muslim Community Elders, the Association Guelph Chapter. We remember them. USW Local 4054. United Steelworkers Local 4120. 
The Salvation Army, Guelph Citadel. In memory of Our Lady of Lourdes, Catholic High School in Guelph, we remember them. The Five Dyer Brothers. The dogs who stood beside us in every endeavor. Upper Grand Elementary teachers. The Memory Gardens Funeral Home. The donkeys and mules of war. Electra and IBEW. The Guelph District Labor Council, we remember them. So Mike, could you describe a bit what's about to come? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, Reef Party will retire and uh, then the uh, service ex itself will begin uh, with the MC uh, Padre Mike Dell uh, MC as, as the program as it goes. There, there will be the dedication of the wreath by the uh, uh, Padres uh, uh, Guy Farth Beth Insignia uh, Isaiah Synagogue the very Reverend Ian Duffin, Rector of the Basilica of Our Lady, and Reverend Michael Dell, Chaplain, Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 234. Very good. I think you're about to begin now, Mike. Yes. Thank you, comrade Ferris and everyone for the laying of the wreaths. Now, all of you should have a bulletin that you can follow along. And this morning, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, O Valiant Hearts, as we are also accompanied by uh, the Guelph Concert Band. Would the audience please stand as we sing this hymn?
please be seated. Sergeant Brian Hessler, uh, composing of Master Bombardier Alexander Frederick, Bombardier Keith Olson, Bombardier Thomas Ojapo, Bombardier Connor Britton, Bombardier Albert Bacos, Bombardier Tyler Stewart, Bombardier Franklin Parks, Bombardier Michael Jones, Bombardier John McIsaac and Bombardier Samuel Cross. Sir, and I'm going to have three shots with respect to Remembrance Day. Yes, they will. they will. They will be firing three volleys. Yes, exactly. That's the right word. Again, yeah. just a quick reminder that when we have the last post and the minute of silence and the lament and the rouse, the firing party will be firing at the end of that. Just be prepared for that if you could be. We're going to take a few minutes now and we are actually going to dedicate these wreaths. And it is my pleasure to be here with some fellow clergy members to raise up some prayers as we think and remember of those who gave their lives as represented by these wreaths here, so many of them from the different organizations in the city of Guelph. I'm going to call first on Guy Farb from Beth Isaiah Synagogue. May he who blessed our ancestors Bless the members of the Canadian Armed Forces who stand guard over this land and who stand forth for freedom within its frontiers as well as abroad, on land, in the air, and at sea. May the Almighty remember those that have given up their lives to protect their fellow citizens. May the Holy One, blessed be He, preserve and rescue our fighters from every trouble and distress, and from every plague and illness. And may he send blessing and success upon their every endeavor. May he lead the peoples of the earth to beat the weapons of war into tools of growing and building. We pray for the day when the lion will lie down with the lamb, and when all of creation will live in peace. May this day come soon. Now let us say Amen. I'll now call upon the very Reverend Ian Duffy, the rector of the Basilica of Our Lady here in Guelph, to bring a word of prayer. As we gather on this Remembrance Day, let us offer our thanksgiving to Almighty God for the victory achieved on land, at sea, and in the air, for the liberation of so many from the cruelty of occupation and oppression, and for the restoration of peace and good order. Let us give thanks for the heroism and courage of those who, so, who served in the armed forces, 
who worked on the home front in civil defense, hospitals and relief agencies, in factories, shops and farms. Let us pray for those who endured captivity and torture, and let us commend to Almighty God those who gave their lives that others might be free. God of infinite mercy, we commend to your loving care all those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the sake of others, and we thank you for the gifts of peace, security, and freedom that we enjoy. We trust in your good purpose of peace for all people, and we pray for those who face danger and endure still the scourge of war. Watch over those in peril, support those who are anxious for loved ones, and gather into your eternal kingdom those who have died. Remove from the hearts of all people the passions that keep alive the spirit of war, and in your goodness, ensure peace among all peoples. And for those who have gone before us, we pray, Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. <coughs> Would you bow your heads? Almighty God, we offer thanks for the life and health given to us to carry the torch from our lost warriors. In a world that presently is uncertain and divided and at war once again, the world's ask for your divine help and discernment. We desire, O oh, Almighty God, your presence with us this day, and may your light of truth penetrate the hearts of all assembled here in this arena and in the entire city of Guelph. We pray that at this time you will comfort the families of veterans and current service members who are serving in far-off places. Please heal the wounded and all those bearing the scars of battle, both physical and emotional. Dear God, give them patience under their suffering and a happy issue out of their afflictions. Place your hand as a touch of comfort and bless the mothers, the widows, and the fatherless. We raise up to you, merciful God, our brave boys and girls who made the supreme sacrifice in the great conflicts in which Canada has volunteered over the decades. Give those serving this day strength to overcome loss present-day wounds, and the many challenges to come. Be near them in their solitude. We proclaim, O Heavenly Father, to all the world that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may be with us now and through eternity. Soothe pain and discouragement in the Ukraine and bring victory. In all of this, we dedicate these wreaths as a solemn remembrance that where there is disagreement, we should seek unity. Where there is suffering, we should provide comfort. May we remember Jesus' own instruction that peacemakers shall be called the sons of God. And may we remember the instruction of the Apostle Paul who said, 
if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Amen. I'm going to ask the audience to stand once again, if you are able, if you're not able, that is perfectly fine, but please stand. That living cross of cadets is an addition which is absolutely wonderful to showcase. It is. They are all members of the Naval League. Wonderful. Great addition. Great ideas. Bugler, the last post. Please join in a period of silence.
well done uh, better than ever before the graphics is incredible yes uh, the uh, last post uh, was one of the best that I have ever heard it was just excellent followed by the lament audience you may be seated and I think we better good. I think we better be seated <laughs> Mike, what's the scene that's going on now? The guard commander, uh, Sergeant Heisler, uh, after marching off the firing party, is now returning to uh, relieve the sentries of their duty, and he will be marching them off. Uh, the sentries uh, are Naval Petty Officer First Class Adele Hugendorn, Army Cadet Sergeant Carter Sheffield Higgin, the Air Force Guard Warrant Officer Second Class Cashman Skinner, and the 11th Field Member Master Bombardier Brandon Lewis. And what was the objective reason they were at the Senate earlier on guarding all four corners? What was the significance of that, Mike? They're indicative of the those from the forces, the various forces who fought in the war and uh, gave their lives for our freedom. Okay, thank you, Mike. I think we're about ready to begin, and we will be silent. In the comforts of your seats here this morning, I'm going to invite you to listen to a musical version of Colonel John McRae's poem, In Flanders Fields.
I think you would all agree with me that we are very blessed to live in the city of Guelph, I think one of the greatest cities in the country. And I would like to call on our very own Mayor Cam Guthrie to bring us a few words this morning. Well, thank you so much uh, for having me here again today and uh, to all the honoured veterans, members of Canada's Armed Forces and Reserves, cadets, yes, scouts, emergency responders and all members of the community of Guelph. It's my privilege to be with you today to bring greetings on behalf of City Council and on behalf of our city. The last time I stood at this podium with all of you was in 2019. For the past two Novembers, our community has carried the torch of remembrance with much smaller outdoor services and parades. I'm so grateful that this year we're able to gather together again at the Sleeman Centre. But I want to give a heartfelt thanks, especially to the Royal Canadian Legion right here in our own very city for the remembrance services they've put on over the last couple of years during the pandemic. Yes, let's give them a round of applause. During the pandemic, you adapted so well so our community could still observe this day while still following those public health guidelines that I'm sure we all remember. So I'm just, I'm really just so inspired today to be in this arena full of people here to honor, especially those that gave their lives to serve our country. There is no doubt that the past two years have been very difficult. The pandemic brought enormous challenges both here at home and around the world. And I know it was a very different crisis than what people experienced in wartime, but I do feel there are some parallels. In times of crisis, People are called on to do extraordinary things, and they rise to the challenge. And we saw this through the pandemic. The doctors, the nurses, and all the other healthcare workers who served us tirelessly. The frontline workers, all of them, grocery stores, pharmacies, and so many more, continue to go to work during lockdowns so that all of us in this room could get our essential supplies. The people who organized their own parades to celebrate birthdays or graduations as people drove by in their cars honking their horns. And I could go on and on. We mourn lives lost during the pandemic and we reflect on all those that we missed, that we couldn't be together. But we also must remember to be grateful for all the ways people stepped up for the courage, service, and sacrifices that helped us through many of those dark days. So, so too with Remembrance Day, this is a day for mourning all those we lost, but it's also a day to be profoundly grateful. We mourn the terrible loss of human life and potential that is represented in every name that is on our roll of honor. These are the Guelphites who bravely went off to war but then never returned again. They are the sons, the daughters, the brothers, the sisters, and cherished friends. We are so grateful for the peace and the security that they fought for and died for. It is thanks to their sacrifices today, we have the privilege of living in one of the safest and most prosperous countries in the world. In the midst of extraordinary challenges, people step up and they do extraordinary things. And this was true in wartime, it's true today. We have the capacity to meet challenges with courage and determination, and it is with this capacity that we have hope. It gives us hope, even in our darkest hours. And as I see this community gathered here today, I'm filled with gratitude, with the hope for our future. I'm privileged to join you on this solemn day of remembrance. Together, we honor those that we lost, and we express our profound gratitude for the freedom they fought for. 
and we will renew our pledge today as a community to never, ever forget them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Cam, for your words. I now would like to call on our uh, Madeline McGregor, who is the Zone C2 Poppy Chair of the Royal Canadian Legion, to introduce our guest speaker. It is my honour today to introduce your guest speaker. Lieutenant Colonel Ortiz Sosa was born in San Salvador, El Salvador in 1974 and grew up during turbulent times. He immigrated to Canada in 1990 after having lived through the end of a military dictatorship and 10 years of civil war. He joined the Canadian Armed Forces in February 1996 as a private recruit with the 7th Toronto Regiment RCA. Colonel Ortiz Sosa trained as a gunner, a driver, a communicator, and command post and junior NCO course. In 2002, after having been promoted to Master Bombardier, Colonel Ortiz Sosa was commissioned as a second lieutenant. Colonel Ortiz Sosa held various appointments and promotions over the years, typical of a second lieutenant. Colonel Ortiz Sosa was promoted to major in 2012, posted to the 56th Field Regiment in 2016 as a second in command until 2018 returned to the Toronto Regiment from 2018 until 2020, then was selected as commanding officer of the 11th Field Regiment, RCA, with batteries in Guelph and Hamilton in early 2020. He transferred to his new unit in the summer and is proud to have served and continues to serve with all three artillery units in southwestern Ontario. In civilian life, Lieutenant Ortiz Sosa continues a career in public service with the Ontario government that started in 1998. He is currently employed by the Children, Youth and Social Services I and IT cluster in the maintenance and development of computer applications used to deliver social services to Ontarians. Lieutenant Ortiz Sosa graduated from Glendon College, York University, with a combined honours BA in political science and history, and from Ryerson University with a certificate of economic analysis. Lieutenant Colonel Ortiz Sosa is the father of four children, Miguel Andres, Lauren, Chantel, and Mateo. He was also a foster parent to over 20 children through the Halton and Hamilton Children's Aid Society from 2006 to 2015. I give you Lieutenant Colonel Ortiz Sosa. Ladies and gentlemen, personnel currently serving and retire, cadets, first responders, citizens of the City of Wealth and Wellington County, good morning to you all. We gather here today as a community in a spirit of respect, reflection, and remembrance. This year in particular, I feel especially privileged to be here in Wealth for three reasons. The first reason is that we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the birth of Lieutenant Colonel John McRae in this city of his birth. Second, 
We mark the passing of our late sovereign, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, an example of leadership and service to the United Kingdom, the entire British Commonwealth, including Canada, and someone who had a special relationship with the Canadian Armed Forces. And we mark this this year in our beloved royal city. And the third reason, of course, is that after two years of being restricted with the COVID pandemic and all the threat that that was to us, we are now once again able to gather here as a community and share our common values and to mark this special day that is Remembrance Day. So today, in the spirit of respect, reflection, and remembrance, I invite you all to reflect in the fact that Canadians who join and stay in the Canadian Armed Forces did and continue to do so entirely by their own free will. This Remembrance Day, I invite you to reflect on the decisions that either you or someone that you love made at some point in their time to serve Canada. This choice is a commitment to our country that may lead to the ultimate sacrifice or to a life-changing course. So on Remembrance Day, we think of those who fought and did not return. We think of those who fought and returned, but were never the same. And those who serve and, and continue to serve in support of the institution and to contribute to Canada's effort and readiness, whether it's at home or abroad. Many of those who we remember today are still serving in today's armed forces, whether as soldiers, sailors, or aviators, whether as regular force personnel or reservists. And as reservists, they could be in the primary reserves, the Canadian Rangers, the Cadet Instructor Cadre, or in the supplementary reserves. In addition to those who currently are serving, we are blessed to have many veterans with previous service who continue to support our efforts through the Royal Canadian Legion and different support organizations here in Guelph. So today we reflect and remember all of you and your service, your commitment, and your sacrifices. Today is a day where our reflection leads to the expression of gratitude to those who serve. Today, like many Canadians, I stand here before you to thank you for your service and commitment to your country and to your community. It is my sincere hope that the, your journey of service continues to be as meaningful to you as it is to your regimental family and to your community at large. This time of remembrance is linking of different but like-minded generations from the past, the present, and the future. We see this in our veterans from the Air Force, from the Army, from the Navy, from the Merchant Navy, from co conflicts ranging from the World Wars to Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, different peacekeeping missions, and of course the war in Afghanistan. We also see this in our current members who participated in some of these operations and continue to be deployed today in operations to Iraq, Ukraine, Latvia, and other locations around the globe, as well as sovereignty exercises in the Canadian Arctic and aid to civil power operations in response to natural disasters here at home. We also see this in our cadets, our junior rangers, who may one day join the Canadian Forces. All generations from their diverse occupational background come together on a day like today to respect, reflect, and remember. Here in the city of Guelph, the 11th Field Regiment is the Canadian Armed Forces presence in our community. Our regiment has made contributions throughout Canada's military history. Our regimental contributions have also been contrib contributions of the city of Guelph and contributions of Wellington County. This is the community where we either live or work in, and we are proud to call it our home. We strive to be proud, strong, and ready in order to serve you if and when the need arises. Today, the 11th Field Regiment Royal Canadian Artillery has three batteries. We have the 11th Battery, which is the garrison battery in the city of Hamilton, 29th Battery, which is the garrison battery here in the city of Wealth, and 16th Battery, which is the field battery, which is a composite uh, of both soldiers from the 11th and 29th Battery. 
I'm going to highlight some of the contributions throughout our history while focusing on our local batteries, 29 and 16, located here in our community. 29 Battery was formed in 1866 as a company from the Wellington Rifles. 16 Battery was formed in 1878 from the Ontario Agricultural College, which we now call the University of Wealth. I am proud to say that we have currently soldiers in the city of Wealth who are participating in their own Remembrance uh, Act. In 1880, both of these batteries were united as a field brigade. Together with 43rd and 63rd batteries, we were also here in the city of Wealth. 1900, Wellington County contributed to the war effort in South Africa with a section added to the battery under the leadership of our very own John McRae. During World War I, our gunners from Wealth and Wellington participated in the gas attack at Ypres, the Battle of the Somme, Passchendaele, Amiens, Arras, Cambrai, Mons, and at Vimy Ridge. Our brigade fought at all the major battles during the static trench warfare of France. We have also produced prominent figures in Canadian history who have proudly served our unit. In 1925, one of those figures was Lieutenant Colonel George Drew, who commanded the regiment beginning that year. He had enlisted in 1910 and fought overseas. He rose to be the mayor of the city of Wealth. He was also the premier of Ontario. He was the federal leader of the Conservative Party and as such served as the leader of the, of the opposition in the House of Commons. After politics, he was appointed the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and upon returning to Canada, he also returned to the 11th Field Artillery Regiment as our honorary colonel. During the Second World War, all of the batteries from the 11th Field Regiment served in different roles. 29 Battery was the first one mobilized in 1939, it went overseas, and it fought in Sicily and continental Italy and moved to Northwest Europe after D-Day. The 16th and 43rd Batteries mobilized in 1940 from the 12th and formed the 12th Field Artillery Regiment, Royal Canadian Artillery, as part of the 3rd Canadian Division. They took part in the D-Day landings and fought through Northern Europe in all major Canadian engagements. The 63rd Battery mobilized in 1942 as an anti-aircraft battery with the 19th Field Regiment Royal Canadian Artillery. From 1946 onwards, the 11th Field Regiment continued to serve in the community with 29, 16, and 43rd Batteries, and the 16th Battery was stationed in Fergus, that's further in our link to Wellington County until 1965, when it moved back to the city of Wellington. Today, the regiment continues its tradition of faithful service to Canada. A number of regimental personnel has served as part of Canada's last full contingent to the United Nations forces in Cyprus in 1993. Others have served in the former Republic of Yugoslavia. Regimental personnel have also served in NATO and UN missions to the Golan Heights, Cambodia, Sierra Leone, and Bosnia. Maintaining a long affiliation with the 2nd Regiment of the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery, members of our regiment have volunteered in augmented batteries deployed to Afghanistan and most recently to Operation Unifier in Ukraine and Operation Impact in Iraq. Domestically, members of the regiment deployed to help Canadians in time of emergencies, as was the case back in 1997 in the Manitoba floods and in 1998 in the Ontario ice storm and many other domestic deployments under Operation Lentus to which we continue to contribute every single year. The regiment has also had the opportunity to cooperate with local and provincial pol police in search of missing persons and it continues to deploy soldiers on North and Summer Tea operations under Operation Nunalabut to which we also contribute every year. All these activities are possible due to the commitment and sacrifices that our members have made throughout, throughout our history and continue to make today. As an organization, the regiment is committed to continue supporting Canada in whichever way we are asked to do, whether it is domestically or abroad. Soldiers understand that, and they are constantly reminded of our need to be strong, proud, and ready and we will continue to serve our country and our community because our soldiers 
are very valuable assets that belong not only to the regiment, but also belong to the city of Wealth and to Wellington County. We are not unique in this regard, and we share our spirit of service with our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, our cadets, all first responders, and of course, our veterans, and those supporting our combined efforts throughout different organizations. We also share this spirit of service with those personnel who served before us, many of whom are present here today. As the saying goes, you can take the person out of the service, but you cannot take the spirit of service out of the person. As John McCrae put it in the poem in Flanders Field, he makes a plea to us. And I want you to reflect specifically on the ending of the poem when it says, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep the poppies grow in Flanders fields. With this year's spirit of service and the fellowship of community we enjoy today, I close with a pledge to never forget those who also share our values and spirit with us, who made the ultimate sacrifice and are no longer here with us physically, but remain present with us in spirit. They shall grow not all, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you very much. I'm going to call on the Poppy Chairman here at uh, the Guelph Legion, Mr. David Thompson, to give thanks to the Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure on your behalf to thank the Colonel for his words and for his assessment of the current situations in the military and also a little bit of remembering from the past. That this is a man, and I've only known him for a very brief period of time, but has a great belief in the military in Guelph, the Levens Field, being a valuable part of our city, uh, just as so many of our other organizations flourish together, we also flourish better when we, we work together. And we are very pleased as a legion uh, to have the cooperation of the 11th Field under the leadership of the Colonel. Uh, and we are looking forward to future uh, activities that we can appreciate or we can promote uh, down the road. Anyway, on your behalf, I would like to again congratulate and thank Colonel. going to invite you to stand once again, if you are able to, as we sing Hymn Eternal Father. It is printed in your bulletin, so you should be able to find it there. This is uh, under the direction of the Guelph Concert Band.
Please be seated. I'm going to ask the Sergeant at Arms to prepare, just to prepare the colors to be marched off. We're not going to quite do that just yet, but while those colors are being prepared, I'm going to ask the Guelph Concert Band to um, just play. Once again, I'm going to ask the audience to stand if you are able so that we might sing our national anthem and the royal anthem, both of which are printed in your bulletins. Sergeant at Arms, march off the colors.
be seated. This is bringing us to the end for our service for 2022, but perhaps I could make just a couple of remarks as we end the service. First of all, on the back of your program, you're going to find a list of many, many individuals and organizations that have worked with the Legion Poppy Committee in order to create what we have hope to be a memorable Remembrance Day experience for 2022 here at the, the uh, Sleeman Center. As you can see, this is a community event, and on behalf of all of us, I would affirm that this would not be an, a moving service without the participation and the talent of uh, all of the participants. And I'd like to uh, specifically thank the Guelph Pipe Band as well as the Guelph Concert Band under the direction of Catherine Massey. Would you give them a hand? I'd also like to thank Rogers Cable TV for broadcasting the service and of course the members of the Legion Branch 234 expressing thanks to you. We want to express our thanks as has already been mentioned to the City of Guelph for your ongoing support all throughout the year and certainly during the Poppy Campaign which enables us to do much of the good work that we do. And I would also like to thank everyone here that has uh, participated. Thank you so much for being with us. As you exit here this morning, I would ask that you would keep the Woolwich Street uh, area clear so that the parade can be formed up. I believe it's being formed up in the court lane. So give them a chance to uh, get out there and get formed up. And then I've also been asked to remind those who are going to be marching to uh, make your way to that area for uh, the uh, March Past ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 2022 Remembrance Day service. Our sincere thanks go out to all of you, the audience, for your support and for being here. Have a blessed day. This is a live broadcast on Rogers TV Cable 20, but be prepared today at different time periods it will be repeated. Thank you for joining us. Please continue watching as a parade moves from Sleeman Center to the center path to the corner of Wyndham and Hermosa Street and carries on with the disband at the armories at Lower Wyndham. Thank you for joining us and bye for now.